In this demonstration, you're going to see how to configure iSCSI targets and servers on Windows Server 2019. So we start here in Windows Admin Center with a remote PowerShell session established to server SEA SVR3. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to install the iSCSI target server role. So we use install Windows feature, specify the name, and it installs. Next, we have to prepare the disks on that SVR3 so that we can use them with iSCSI. So at the moment, they're in an uninitialized state. So we initialize disks one, two, and three. And then once we've initialized disks one, two, and three, we create partitions on disk one, two, and three and note the drive letters. So the first disk comes up with drive letter E. The second disk comes up with drive letter F, and the third disk comes up with drive letter G. Once we've done that, we create a ReFS volume on drive E. Drive F. And then finally, on drive G. So we've initialized the disks, prepared them, and put RareFS volumes there. And we've also installed the iSCSI target software. The last thing we need to do is configure firewall rules. So we create an inbound firewall rule that allows iSCSI. And we create an outbound firewall rule that allows iSCSI, both on port 3260 TCP. Now that those rules are created and that configuration is done, we can disconnect from SEA SVR3. We then open the Server Manager console. And what I want to show you first is I want to go across to disk and show you that SEA DC1 only has one disk attached. That's the one that's got the boot and volume C on it. Now we go across to the iSCSI node and what we're going to do is create an iSCSI virtual disk. So we start the new iSCSI wizard, we select SEA SVR3, we select volume E, we give the virtual disk a name, iSCSI disk one. We specify the size as five gigabytes and we set the type to dynamically expanding. We then need to configure an iSCSI target that allows, in this case, the domain controller access to the iSCSI resources that are sitting on SVR3. So we call the target iSCSI farm, and then we provide permission for the computer SEA DC1 to actually interact with that iSCSI target. We click next, we're not turning on any extra authentication, and we click create. It goes and creates the target disk, and also configures access to that disk for the iSCSI target. Once we've done that, what we'll do is we'll go to the tasks menu and create a second iSCSI virtual disk, this time on volume F. We click next. We call this iSCSI disk two. We set it at five gigabytes and dynamically expanding. Now here we've already got a target, so we select the target we created in a previous step. We click next and we click create. So we now have two iSCSI virtual disks that are associated with an iSCSI target. We jump across to the domain controller that's running server core and we just check the host name and that's SEADC1. We then start the iSCSI service. And once we've started that, we can run the necessary control panel, even though this is a server core. So we start the iSCSI initiator. We put our target in is SEA SVR3. We click quick connect. And because everything's configured, we've got that target. We're connected and we can click OK. We jump back to the server manager console and we can see we've got SEA DC1 selected and there's only one disk. So we go up and we click refresh. And we can now see that there's two offline disks that are the iSCSI disks. 
that are now connected to SEA DC1. So in that demonstration, you saw how to configure a server with the iSCSI target software and how to connect to iSCSI resources using the iSCSI control panel.